we're excited about the game this um, Saturday. Um, I feel like tonight they'll probably be ranked number one in the country. I would put them number one uh, offensively and defensively. They're really, really talented, special teams, um, excellent returners. They, uh, do a, they're an excellent football team. And, and Marcus Mariota is playing um, at a high, high caliber. He's healthy, and he's running around and making plays. Um, so uh, it was going to be a tough test. and. Um, our kids are looking forward to going up there and playing. I'll take any questions at this time. Coach, if you were going to construct the perfect college quarterback, how much could you pull from Mariota with that? Well, I, I think into uh, today's college football, I think he kind of fits it to a T. Um, you know, he's able to um, keep plays created, and he's able to make a lot of throws, and um, they do a good job with him um, in, a, in the offense, the way they use, utilize him. But I think one of the things that also makes him go, he has a lot of great weapons around him. Um, he really, really does. And, you know, uh, they also have, they run the ball really well, not just with him, but they, you know, they, they've got some excellent running backs. And the other thing is their receivers run after catch. Um, they're excellent at, it, at that. So there's a lot of explosive plays all over the field um, for them. They did lose their tight end, um, number 85, who was a sophomore, who I think is, he was an unbelievable tight end. I mean, he, he was making play after play after play. And um, his injury was um, kind of, was really rough down there on the goal line the way it happened. Uh, so, uh, uh, you know, they're going to miss him. But I think they have a, a ton of weapons on their football team, which makes Marcus even better. Mike, as you go down the stretch of a season, there is no postseason. So as you go into these last two games, do you try to balance uh, the seniors giving them playing time, but also trying to get some younger guys uh, some experience as they come in next year? <laughs> no, we're going to play the, the guys that we feel like are the ones playing that need to play. You know, we're so beat up um, in the secondary. Uh, I've never been, I've been coaching 25 years. I've never seen anything like it attack one position. Um, and so uh, that's really limited us. And um, we've got guys playing double roles and got guys that were two weeks ago were on scout team that now are starting. So, uh, you know, it's a, it's a, um, a situation where we're getting every man available that can play, you know. And uh, so the kids are excited about going to play. Obviously, uh, as a coach in the Pac-12, you'd love to see another Pac-12 team compete for a national championship. That being said, can your team kind of embrace the, the spoiler role as a chance to maybe knock them out of that? Oh, we'd love to. There's no doubt about it. Um, we would love to. And, uh, you know, they're an excellent football team, and uh, they're, they're playing at a high caliber right now. And, and they got a lot at stake, but of course we would we would definitely love to win that game. There's no doubt about it. So, uh, coach, your team has had some trouble taking down you know big bodied halfbacks guys like Shaq Thompson over uh, this whole season. Face Royce Freeman, who's off topic six one two twenty or so. How do you how do you get your defense to kind of get that mindset? Right. Of, well, know, we need to tackling. yeah we need to do what we did in the second half against Washington. You know, we hit him low and got him down. Um, and that's what you have to do. You, you try to hit a big back high, especially if you're a secondary guy. Um, they're going to stiff arm you. They're going to run over you. And uh, um, I caught a, like about a minute, I think, last night or something, a highlight late, late last night on the running back for uh, Pittsburgh. <laughs> you know, those guys, a couple of saw, saw, um, shots I saw, they were trying to hit him high too. They need to hit him low. Um, so you have to do that. But that's a little easier said and done when you're coming up at different angles on him. But he, he's an excellent back. Um, he's made a lot of great runs. Um, but they have a, they, the thing is they have a couple backs. They kind of keep bringing them at you at waves. And, uh, but we're going to have to fit the run up and, and, and tackle well. And, and that's something we uh, have done good at times and done bad at times. We have to be consistent with it. Nelson said that uh, Troy Walters told him that this is the benchmark for the receiving core, but do you see this as the benchmark for where your offense is going up against this talented defense? Uh, I think each week it is. You know, uh, I, you know statistically, um, the Washington defense was the best we had played, and I thought they played well against that. Uh, I think that this defense um, at Oregon is extremely talented. Um, when you look at their height and weight and length, they consume the field. They kind of – this might be a stupid statement, but when I watch them, it's kind of like watching Syracuse's basketball team in the zone. They're all so long, and they just consume the field. And when you all stand out there on the field with them in pregame, and when they, well, you'll see what I'm talking about. They're six seven. They're six eight. They're six five. You know, they're they're long, athletic guys, and so they're getting passing lanes, and they run people down. Um, their their secondary's tall and athletic. 
So uh, I, they kind of consume the field. I think they're very, very talented. Um, and uh, we've got to find a way to move the ball, which we have all year, and I think we will again. Uh, but we just got to realize that length and athleticism is going to cause us some issues. Statistically, they've given up a lot of yards, though. Yes, they What's have. What's the explanation on that? Um, there's good offenses in our league. <laughs> I really do, and I think they get pumped up to play Oregon. And I think the offenses in our league, knowing that Oregon scores at the click they do, those offenses take more chances. They go for it more on fourth down. So I think it's, if that makes sense, I think it's kind of a, you know, if, if their offense wasn't scoring as many points, the other team's offenses might be a little more conservative knowing they're not going to have to. And I think that's caused a little bit more point total on them than, than usual. But, um, you know, they've cranked it up a lot of times when they've had to, too. Speaking of big plays, Oregon's offense is, you know, the, the king of big plays. And your defense has given up uh, quite a few of those this year. Yep. How do you mitigate those big plays, those third and long scenarios turned into 34-yard you know, games? Yeah, um, again, it's, it's getting lined up correctly, tackling the guys in open space, being on our, our correct landmarks. Um, it, it's a, it's, I wish it was easy, as easy to say as it is to do. Um, so we've got to find a way to be able to do that. Where kids have been working at it hard, and um, hopefully we can um, mitigate some of those. They're going to make some long plays. We've got to mitigate um, the number of them, and we need to find a way to. One thing we haven't done for some reason, we haven't been able to cause turnovers, um, and that's something we have to do to, to be a good defense. Good defenses cause turnovers. They have plays made on, but they cause turnovers and, and make different things happen, and we haven't been able to do that. Um, like we'd like by any stretch. Did you watch Arizona beat Oregon? Or did yeah, I did. Uh, Mariota was hurt in that game. You know, he had an ankle situation, didn't run the ball near as much. Uh, every time they've lost, basically he's been banged up somehow during the game. I mean, you can go back and look at that over the last couple of years. When he's healthy, I don't think – when he's truly healthy and he can run and make plays, I don't know if they've ever lost. And uh, so um, – and that's kind of – that, you know, everybody knows about the story last year where they were trying to – he was hurt and they didn't really run him much. Everybody was wondering what was going on. His knee was bothering him. So um, maybe he'll stub his toe in warm-ups or something. So, Coach, how much will Jordan Gerke play uh, in this game? We're going to find out as the week goes along um, with Sefo's situation. And Sefo was able to do a little bit more today, but he's still not at – we're completely 100% cleared. We think he will be. So we'll just see how the week goes along and how that progresses to exactly how much uh, we do for Saturday.